In a heated exchange, Kelly confronted me, claiming her right to the house as her father's true daughter, urging me to leave. Her words caught me off guard, but I couldn't help laughing, teasing her curiosity about what I knew that she didn't. As the moving crew waited for instructions, I directed them to store the belongings in an extra room, not having much to move. When Kelly attempted to intrude, I firmly told her the house was mine, leaving her fuming and storming away. This confrontation, especially after losing Jerry, filled me with a resolve to stand my ground. I'm Megan, a 35-year-old music instructor, married to Jerry, an entrepreneur seven years my senior. Our relationship blossomed from a professional acquaintance to love, contemplating marriage when Jerry revealed his past. He was previously married, had a daughter, Kelly, and gained her custody after his ex-wife's betrayal and financial recklessness. Kelly, brought up by Jerry, seemed to want for nothing, but her demands grew with Jerry's success. She became increasingly materialistic and rebellious, ignoring Jerry's attempts to guide her. Her disdain for me was evident when we met during her high school years, claiming she would never see me as a mother, valuing only her beautiful mother and wealthy father. Despite her attitude, Jerry and I waited until Kelly was an adult and on her own to marry, hoping for maturity. Jerry, viewing Kelly as his only child, feared her reaction to having a sibling, considering her refusal to accept me. With no desire for more children, partly due to Kelly's hostility and my reservations about parenting, Jerry and I chose a life together, child-free. Our marriage marked the beginning of peaceful days, cut short by Jerry's cancer diagnosis. The disease was advanced, leaving us with limited options. The shock was overwhelming, leaving me to face the enormity of his illness and the solitude of our home without him. Exhausted and grappling with Jerry's illness, I found myself facing yet another challenge. Kelly, Jerry's stepdaughter. Despite our technical relation, our paths had rarely crossed, making her sudden appearance all the more surprising. It was clear she knew of Jerry's condition, hinting at a conversation between them. Despite the awkwardness, Kelly, with a mix of arrogance and a hint of mockery, proclaimed her role as the caretaker for both me and her father, emphasizing her status as his real daughter compared to me, his wife. Her words stung, leaving a bitter taste as she departed. I reached out to Jerry, sharing the unsettling encounter. He expressed regret, hoping Kelly had matured beyond such pettiness. I reassured him, downplaying the ordeal, not wanting to add to his burdens. Yet, internally, I doubted my ability to manage Kelly's hostility, especially with our significant age difference making the connection seem even more unlikely. As time passed, my professional life remained steady, but the stress of Jerry's battle with cancer and Kelly's intrusive presence weighed heavily on me. Kelly's move into our neighborhood only intensified the strain, marking the start of an even more challenging period. Her unexpected role in my life became more complicated with the arrival of Sophia, her daughter, effectively making me a step-grandmother. Kelly had quickly fallen into a problematic relationship after high school, mirroring her mother's past mistakes. This led to her pregnancy with Sophia and a subsequent fallout with the baby's father. Despite receiving child support, Kelly seemed more focused on leveraging Jerry's illness for her gain, viewing it as an opportunity to secure a future inheritance. Her blatant selfishness and manipulation were evident in her actions and conversations, which I overheard, discussing Jerry's wealth and her potential share. The thought of burdening Jerry with this reality was unbearable. Thus, I chose to remain silent, bearing the weight of Kelly's machinations alone. Kelly's demands grew over time, from brief babysitting requests to more prolonged periods, using various excuses to leave Sophia in my care. This pattern escalated, reflecting Kelly's disregard for my well-being and her focus on exploiting the situation to her advantage. Amidst this, I struggled with the added responsibility and the emotional toll of Jerry's illness, finding myself in a situation far more complex than I could have anticipated. Thus, I inadvertently assumed the role of Sophia's unpaid caregiver, never once contemplating compensation due to her being my step-grandchild. My reluctance to refuse Kelly stemmed from a fear of neglecting Sophia's needs. Kelly's demands steadily grew, culminating in her request for me to babysit Sophia for six days while she vacationed with friends, dismissing my schedule under the guise that I was always available. While I inwardly resisted, the threat of Kelly's retaliation forced my compliance. Despite my initial hesitations about childcare, 
Sophia's endearing nature awakened a sense of affection within me. However, Kelly's plans placed additional financial pressure on me, especially with Jerry's ongoing medical expenses. I had been shouldering the costs for Sophia's necessities, striving to manage without dipping into Jerry's funds. The escalating costs, combined with my role as Sophia's caretaker, ignited questions about why I was fulfilling Kelly's parental duties. Determined to confront Kelly upon her return, my plans were abruptly interrupted by news of Jerry's critical condition. At the hospital, amidst the chaos, Sophia's cries and the news of Jerry's peaceful passing overwhelmed me with sorrow. Kelly's absence during this period, justified by an extended trip, left me to handle the funeral arrangements alone, a responsibility she casually imposed over the phone. Kelly's indifference to her father's death and her expectations for me to manage everything, including Sophia's care, was shocking. I crafted excuses for her absence to Jerry's relatives, maintaining peace during the funeral despite her continued disregard. In the two weeks following Jerry's passing, Kelly remained incommunicado, only to resurface with a group of movers at her side, declaring her intention to move in. Claiming her rights as Jerry's biological daughter, she demanded I leave. Her assertion caught me off guard, but I responded with laughter, hinting at a revelation unknown to her. This shift in my demeanor, from typically submissive to unexpectedly assertive, visibly unnerved Kelly. I directed the confused movers to store Kelly's belongings temporarily, asserting my ownership of the house and our lack of legal kinship. My stance was clear. Kelly's failure to recognize me as a mother precluded any familial obligations on my part, especially after exploiting my goodwill. Confronted with this reality, Kelly appeared unsettled, faced with the consequences of her actions for the first time. Following Kelly's abrupt announcement of her trip's end, I pointedly reminded her of her responsibilities as a mother, suggesting it was time she took proper care of Sophia. Kelly's dismissive reaction and hasty departure, leaving Sophia behind, left everyone present bewildered by her irresponsibility. Her attempt to reclaim her place in the house especially under such disrespectful circumstances, fueled my resolve to stand up to her. Despite Kelly's absence and unresolved living situation, I found myself fully committed to caring for Sophia, who had grown deeply attached to me over time. With the support of friends and Jerry's extended network, I navigated the complexities of childcare, integrating Sophia into my life and work. The community around us, including my students' parents and Jerry's relatives, rallied to offer their support, making our situation known and ensuring Sophia's well-being during my teaching hours. However, Kelly's sudden re-emergence five months later, accompanied by law enforcement and a child welfare official accusing me of kidnapping, marked a dramatic escalation. Her baseless allegations were met with my calm explanation of the events, which seemed to surprise and clarify the situation for the officials. Kelly's blatant disregard for her daughter, followed by her false accusations, was transparent to everyone involved. In asserting the truth, I highlighted Kelly's neglect and the potential legal repercussions of her actions, which seemed to resonate, causing her to retract her claims. The situation at hand was not just about resolving a false accusation, but also about addressing Kelly's irresponsible behavior and its impact on Sophia. The officer's gratitude and the subsequent validation of my role in Sophia's life by the community underscored the importance of integrity and support in facing unjust accusations. Kelly's panic and subsequent realization of her precarious position illustrated. The consequences of her actions, leading to a moment of accountability facilitated by the intervention of the authorities and the collective witness of those who knew the truth. After Kelly's unfounded accusations led to a swift community response in my favor, she faced no legal repercussions but did receive a stern lecture from the police. This incident seemingly humbled her, leading to a period of silence that lasted five months. During this time, I had to navigate the complexities of Jerry's estate, given Kelly's status as his biological daughter and therefore a rightful heir. Despite numerous attempts to involve her in the inheritance discussions through various means, including hiring a detective and legal notices, Kelly remained elusive. When the time came to legally settle Jerry's estate around the first anniversary of his passing, Kelly's absence and lack of response forced me to seek a court's intervention for an inheritance partition. It was only after the family court made its decision, which was not in her favor, that Kelly resurfaced, outraged by being left out. 
Her misunderstanding of the inheritance process and entitlement to a share, despite her avoidance of any legal or familial responsibilities, prompted a confrontation. I had to explain to Kelly that the inheritance process began much earlier than she assumed, and her period to claim any share had long since expired. Jerry's explicit will, which she ignored, along with her failure to engage in any discussions, legally justified her exclusion based on his expressed wishes and her neglect. Kelly's attempt to challenge the court's decision, claiming she took care of our father and thus deserved a share, was met with factual evidence to the contrary. Records and testimonies confirmed her absence during crucial times, undermining her claims and reinforcing the court's ruling in my favor. Her subsequent desperate assertion of her rights over Sophia, after initially disclaiming any responsibility for her daughter, highlighted the inconsistency and irresponsibility in her behavior. Despite her claims, Kelly's actions made it clear she was unprepared and unwilling to provide for Sophia, further validating the court's decision and my role in Sophia's life. This series of events underscored the importance of responsibility, legal adherence, and the moral obligations we hold towards our family members, especially in the wake of a loved one's passing. Sophia, my step-granddaughter, became the center of a complex situation with Kelly. After Kelly's lengthy absence and lack of involvement in Sophia's life, she suddenly claimed her rights as a mother. When I confronted her about not caring for Sophia despite receiving government child support, Kelly defensively claimed it was her right. However, I pointed out the fraudulence of her actions, highlighting the legal repercussions she could face for receiving support without fulfilling her parental duties. Kelly's attempt to dismiss the seriousness of the situation fell apart when I mentioned that I had recorded our conversation, securing evidence of her admission. This recording, saved to the cloud, could not be destroyed, thus safeguarding it against any attempts by Kelly to erase her wrongdoing. Upon realizing the gravity of her situation, Kelly became visibly distressed, fearing legal action and the potential requirement to repay the fraudulently obtained support. Her desperation became palpable when I informed her that the authorities were already investigating based on the evidence I was prepared to provide. In a last-ditch effort to maintain her financial benefit, Kelly demanded Sophia's return, revealing her selfish motive was partly fueled by jealousy of the bond I shared with Sophia. However, I remained calm, suggesting that any decisions regarding Sophia should involve her father, to Kelly's shock. At that moment, Benjamin, Sophia's biological father, and Kelly's ex-husband entered the room. Contrary to Kelly's claims of him being an irresponsible club promoter, I discovered through investigation that Benjamin was a stable office worker, misrepresented by Kelly. Upon reaching out to him, Benjamin's immediate and emotional response to meeting Sophia debunked Kelly's accusations and showcased his genuine interest in his daughter's well-being. This revelation exposed the truth about Kelly's deceptive narratives and her attempt to manipulate those around her for financial gain. The situation underscored the importance of truth, responsibility, and the well-being of a child caught in adult conflicts. When Benjamin reached out to me, revealing the true reason behind their divorce, Kelly's infidelity and misuse of her maternal status to gain custody of Sophia, I was moved. Benjamin had silently fulfilled his duties and provided child support while longing for his daughter. His affection for Sophia was undeniable, and it became clear to me that Sophia's well-being was paramount and deserving a loving and capable parent like Benjamin. Determined to rectify the situation, I engaged with child welfare services and legal advice to explore Benjamin's options for regaining custody. Despite Kelly's legal rights, her actions, or lack thereof, over the past two years, demonstrated her negligence and misuse of Sophia's presence for her convenience, hardly the behavior expected of a nurturing mother. Behind the scenes, I worked diligently, not only on resolving the inheritance matter, but also on ensuring Sophia's return to a suitable environment. Benjamin, on the verge of significant career advancement, presented a stable and caring alternative to Kelly's chaotic lifestyle. His consistent financial support and genuine concern for Sophia contrasted sharply with Kelly's self-serving actions. As I confronted Kelly with the realities of her actions, including her fraudulent activities and unstable relationships, it became evident that Benjamin's responsible and affectionate nature made him the clear choice for Sophia's custody. Kelly's facade crumbled, revealing the extent of her manipulations and the consequences of her choices. In the end, the court recognized the best environment for Sophia was with Benjamin, granting him custody. 
This decision, while seemingly straightforward to some, was the result of careful consideration and the collective support of those who had witnessed the situation unfold. My acquaintances, students' parents, and Jerry's relatives expressed concern, possibly perceiving the transition as too swift. Yet, they understood the importance of placing Sophia in a loving, stable home with her father, where she truly belonged. Throughout the challenging year, I faced the dilemma of whether to keep Sophia away from Benjamin, her biological father who loved her deeply. Before delving into Kelly's current circumstances, it's important to outline the events that led to this point. Kelly faced arrest for fraudulently claiming child support while not caring for Sophia. Her entanglements with a boyfriend and another man who financially supported her contributed to her legal troubles, culminating in probation but no jail time. However, the subsequent custody battle revealed her deceit and desperation, leading to the court's decision to grant Benjamin full custody. Kelly's downward spiral continued as she lost not only Sophia but also her relationships and financial stability. Eventually, she found herself jobless and living in dire conditions, a stark outcome of her actions. In contrast, I lived simply, not tapping into Jerry's inheritance, which I believed was meant to benefit Sophia. Jerry's apprehension about directly including Sophia in his will, fearing it might embroil her in legal issues, led me to support her in indirect ways, such as providing gifts funded by the inheritance for special occasions. Benjamin's recent confession of his feelings towards me marked a new chapter. His acknowledgement of the bond Sophia and I shared, and his respect for my status as Jerry's widow, presented a heartfelt proposal for us to become a family. This confession resonated with the hidden message in Jerry's will, where he expressed his wish for my happiness after his passing. Jerry's words, emphasizing my well-being and happiness above all, provided a sense of closure and a path forward. Reflecting on Jerry's wishes, Benjamin's genuine affection, and considering what's best for Sophia, I found myself contemplating a future where Benjamin and I could provide a loving and stable environment for Sophia. The thought of being present for Sophia's milestones, such as her first day of elementary school, symbolized a hopeful and nurturing future for us all, a testament to the resilience and capacity for love amidst life's complexities.